So it wasn't a perfect book, but I'm not gonna lie. She had me with the Degrassi reference. It's just, this book is great. So you're like, uh, you've talked about it for 20 minutes. What's it actually about? And I was, I listened, I listened. <laughs> oh. Or 15th anniversary edition. Maybe just, you know, do the work. Do the work. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse or welcome if you are new here and welcome to some of what I read in the month of April. So I am having a really great reading month, knock wood, all the things. And because you guys know I talk a lot, a lot, a lot, I'm just sort of in the habit of doing these in two parts. So this is legit part one, we're part way through the month. I'm just gonna tell you about some of the books I've read so far, but I did the book list backlist readathon. I have picked up some arcs. I have done just sort of some catch up reading on a nonfiction book. I'm looking at the floor where it's sitting and I have revisited one of my old, old favorites, which I haven't read in a bajillion years. And I read it again and I was reminded why I love it so much. So let's get into it. The first book I want to talk about is 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. And I read The Nothing Man last year and loved it so, so much. And I had heard great things about Katherine Ryan Howard before that. And I was like, she's completely up my alley and I need to read all of her stuff. And I like got all her books. And then I just like, I was like, I'm going to do all her backlists. And then I didn't do it. But I talked about this in a different video. I listened to an interview with her where she's talking about 56 days and she was talking about her upcoming book runtime, which comes out in August and I pre-ordered it already and I'm excited for it. And she got me so excited about 56 days. And this was one of those books where I heard great things about, but I also knew that it had a COVID element to it. And I just didn't know if I was going to be ready for it. But after listening to her interview, I just like, I need to go into this. I'm like so excited for this book. You guys, I loved this book, compulsively read it. I wound up also getting the audiobook, So I did both. And it was like the best way to read it because for one, I a thousand percent was pronouncing the main character's name wrong in my head until I started listening to the audiobook. So I was calling her Sierra and it's Kiera. So that was very helpful. One of my favorite things about audiobooks is um, getting like the names and the places right <laughs> when you hear them actually said out loud. But this book had like, I don't want to say like just enough pandemic in it that it was nostalgic, but it wasn't overwhelming and too much for me. So here's the thing with this book. This is about two strangers who meet in Ireland in a supermarket. So this is about Kiera and Oliver, and they meet in a supermarket queue kind of right as the pandemic is coming to Ireland. And they date for a few weeks and then sort of the notice comes down that everyone needs to go into lockdown for two weeks. And you can't, you know, you can only walk a certain distance and you can't be with people who aren't in your household and like all the things, everything that came. So they decide to move in together for those two weeks because it's early in the relationship and they're having a nice time together and they don't want to have to be apart for two weeks. And as we all know, two weeks became way more than that. But we get to see those early days of the pandemic and none of that is as important as the core of the story, which is that when the book opens, the police are at the apartment and they find a dead body. So somebody doesn't make it out of this quarantine alive. And we wind up going to multiple timelines. So we get to see the present day, which is the police investigation. And then we flash back to when they first met. And then we get the multiple points of view. So we get Kiara and we get Oliver. So one of the things that I've heard people talk about that they didn't love about this is that you will see the same scene through both of their eyes. I didn't mind that at all. And I actually enjoyed the different perspectives because I feel like it was such an... Okay, who's surprised that my card was full. Anyway, all right, back to it. Just cleared off some old videos. So one of my favorite things about seeing the same scenes, and you don't see every scene from both perspectives, but seeing certain scenes from both perspectives is how that, that line about like there's three sides to every story. There's yours, mine, and the truth. 
everyone walks into a situation and gets something different out of it. Everybody's memories of the exact same party are different. Everybody's view of the exact same situation is a little bit different because everything is seen through your eyes and your interpretation and your history and your baggage and what you bring to the table. And I thought that was super interesting and I totally loved it. So compulsive read, a thousand percent was here for it. It was just enough police investigation. And I always love, like, I love police investigation. I liked the writing is amazing. Like I liked the humor of it. I liked the development of this relationship. I loved what both of them came to the table with. And I just loved the whole story. I loved the ending. I loved the reveal. I loved everything about it. Again, audiobook is tremendous. Physical book is great. I think you can go right either way or do a little bit of both like I did, but I am continuing to be obsessed with her. I need to read some more for backlist. I can't wait for runtime to come out. And what a great, I didn't even start the book. I'm not reading, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not showing you guys these in order of what I read them. I just picked some books up. I started this on April 7th. So what a great way to semi, not really totally start the month. Loved it. The next book I have was a reread for me and I didn't have this on my book list backlist TBR, but it could have fulfilled book list backlist, but I didn't read it for that, so whatever, it's fine. So Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg. So this book is a writing, instruction isn't really the right word, I don't think, but it says freeing the writer from within. So I have read this book multiple times, more times than I can even tell you, but at least I would say four or five. It is dog-eared to pieces. I started reading this book, I wanna say maybe it was like the late 90s was the first time I read it. This came out in 1986. I did not have it in 1986. But I just absolutely loved this. And I wanna say it was the late 90s when I first read it, but either way, it's really, really well done. And this time around, I wound up getting the audiobook from the library, but the audiobook from the library was like a 25th anniversary edition or 20th anniversary edition or 15th anniversary edition, maybe just, you know, do the work. Do the work. So while I'm doing the work, this was an edition of the book that Natalie Goldberg herself narrates, which is great. I'm gonna say 20 years, because the audiobook says it's 2007. This came out in 1986, but nobody does like a 21 year collector's edition, but <laughs> maybe they do. <laughs> So what's really interesting about this is Natalie Goldberg is reading Writing Down the Bones, but then she is adding in commentary or she is talking more about the chapters or she's reflecting back on what she wrote. So it's really her going down a memory lane as well, which I thought was really interesting. And I wrote down a lot of quotes in here and things that are not in the book that she talks about. And it's really interesting to hear her look back on the advice she was giving and her experiences at the time. And then after she reads the book, there's an interview at the end that she does. And the all that to say, like the audiobook is much longer than the book book is, but I very much enjoyed it. There's always just good nuggets. I started reading this back in March and kind of was slowly working my way through it. And it's that kind of a book. It's all little vignettes and it's always just, helpful to me when I'm looking for some inspiration or looking to reconnect or be reminded why, why I write or why I love writing. And I'm still on like an unofficial sabbatical from getting back to the next draft of my book, which is a combination of intentional sabbatical and now letting life get in the way of things and not prioritizing it, which is a whole different problem in a whole different video. But anyway, I really much, I really much, I very much enjoyed revisiting this and I always do. And if you're a writer, I think you can just glean so much from it. So it's just really interesting. So I always love an audiobook where the author, him or herself, reads it. And Annie Lamont did it as well for Bird by Bird. And I just think it's great because you like hear the book how it was meant to be. But really interesting experience having the chance to listen to her talk about the book as well or like reflect back on the book. So love it. I keep shaking it. So hopefully that was not making anybody too dizzy. The next book I have is Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. So this is the arc of the book. This comes out in, I said it wrong the last time. This comes out in July. And I am a super fan of Jennifer Hillier. You guys know, if you've been here for more than a minute, you know that. And I really enjoyed this book. So there's some tabbing going on on the side. This was, 
I have now read all of her books. So I've been on like a major Jennifer Hillier binge lately, as you guys know, and I find it so interesting. And I'm gonna do like an all in Jennifer Hillier video. What I wanna do is I wanna reread Jar of Hearts, which is her first, the first book of hers that I read, and then Little Secrets, which was her last book that came out. But I haven't read those books. I wanna say I read Jar of Hearts in 2019 and I read Little Secrets in 2020 when it came out. So part of me is like Jar of Hearts is still my favorite, but I also don't know if I have a sentimental emotional attachment to it because it was her first that I read and I loved it. So anyway, all that to say, very much enjoyed this book. And there's such, my point was like, there's such hallmarks to her writing. And I think one of the great things about being able to read a writer's entire collection is you can see not just their growth and change over time, but also things they go back to, not in a bad way, but sort of what their sweet spot is or what what they love or little nuggets that they throw in there or maybe little Easter eggs that they throw in there or things that they gravitate towards, whether it be place or theme or something like whatever it is. But I feel like having read so many of her books in the past few months, I see so much familiarity in a good way that I very much appreciate and enjoy. So this book, like all of her others, has a very dark, things we do in the dark, overtone to it. She has very human, very messy characters who make choices, who make decisions, who live with these choices, who are complicated and complex and far from perfect and trying to live their lives and trying to live with consequences of decisions they have made and trying to make the right decisions now. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I hesitate again to say much of anything because I don't want to give anything away because there were things in this book that obviously I didn't know about that when they happened, I was like, oh, okay, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah. Like I was totally in for it. So what I will give you is what they give us on the back because I feel like that's all you need to know. So this is about a woman named Paris and she is arrested in her own bathroom, covered in blood, holding a straight razor. Her celebrity husband dead in the bathtub. She knows she's in serious trouble. So it says, as bad as it looks, the arrest is not what worries her the most. With the unwanted media attention now surrounding her, it's only a matter of time before someone from her old life recognizes her and destroys everything she's worked so hard to build because Paris has a dark past and she'll do anything to keep it hidden. So one of the things I enjoyed about this book is we are in the know about some things and I, I think we are meant to figure some things out on our own and we're meant to be on a path with someone as they figure out some things. And we're of course meant to question things and do all of that great stuff that happens in a thriller. But I feel like this was not, this was not completely meant to like pull the rug out from underneath us or like flip everything on its head, which I appreciate. And I appreciate that we are, we are with very interesting characters as they are on a journey in their life and living this certain point of being covered in blood, found next to your dead husband. And I think back to Vera Curry and talking about her book, Never Saw Me Coming. And she talked about how, cause somebody had asked her like if, like how she plots or plots twists or like all of these kinds of things. And she had said how she's so much more interested in the character and the story. And if people figure things out along the way, that's fine because you should be able to figure things out along the way because there are breadcrumbs there and there are all the pieces of the story laid out for you so that you can get to that natural conclusion. And it should never feel like it wasn't being played fair, like you were being duped in the book or that the information wasn't there for you to find if you were looking for it. And I appreciate that. And I feel like that's very much what Jennifer Hillier does in a very smart way. And I really enjoyed it. So I think her writing is just great. And I just had such a fun time with this book. And again, I'm just so, 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 so grateful to Minotaur for sending this to me. I have told you guys, I like begged and pleaded for a copy of this book and died when I got the email that they were gonna send it to me. So I'm so super thrilled. I'm going to pick up a hard copy for my collection of Jennifer Hillier because I'm obsessed with her, but totally loved it. This comes out in July. So if you were wondering if it was gonna be any good, spoiler alert, I will highly continue to recommend this book and her as a writer.
The next book I have is The Lion Club by Annie Ward. And the title of this one blurb says, three women, two bodies, one big lie. So I wound up listening to the audiobook of this, and this was narrated by Terry Schneebelt. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. And this was a book that I actually had an arc of from NetGalley. And I had mentioned this because I was super excited about this. This is like a boarding school setting, but it's about the adults, not, it's about the kids, but not totally, but it's from like the adult perspective. And my e-arc was like all messed up and I couldn't read it and I was so bummed about it. So when it came out and I saw my library had it, I like picked it up immediately because I was super curious about it. And I very much enjoyed this book. This is like soapy, frothy, kind of like a little bit like decadent, a little bit ridiculous, but a little bit fun, but a little bit off the rails, kind of just give into it and just sort of enjoy the ride. So it's sort of like popcorny and kind of like, I hate to use the word guilty pleasure, but it feels like a little bit guilty pleasure for me. I realize it's also more than one word, but you guys know what I mean. So this kind of reminds me of like a Hunting Wives kind of a book. And I say that with great love and affection because I absolutely love The Hunting Wives and I can't wait for her next book. But this is about three different women at this boarding school in Colorado. So we have two of the women are parents of two of the kids who go to school there. And then the third woman works in the administrative office. And she is not as rich, not as wealthy, not as well off as the other two women are. And she's sort of a little bit envious of them and kind of tries to befriend them a little bit. And their lives wind up colliding and overlapping and things start to happen. So this kind of has a little bit of like a Big Little Lies vibe to it, but again, has a much soapier twist to it than Big Little Lies had, in my opinion. And I very much also loved Big Little Lies. But in this one, sort of in that similar vibe of many, many books out there, on page one, we know somebody is dead. You know from the color blurb. Two bodies, three women, one big secret. So we wind up going kind of forwards and backwards in time, and we start to figure out sort of like the who, the why, the, you know, everybody's a suspect, everybody has a motive, like all of that kind of stuff. And we've got, it says, a tangled web of lies draws three women together. So Natalie is the office assistant and she basically is just like super jealous of the two moms. So Brooke and Asha are the two moms and they have complicated relationships with their children and with their partners. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with the kids in the school. So we start to see how that intertwines. And it's just sort of rich people behaving badly and a little bit off the rails. And there's a weather element that happens to this book. And there's people doing dark and messed up things. And I just like completely enjoyed it. Like I said, it was just like soapy fun. I listened to it pretty compulsively. It was very entertaining for sure. And I think if you are kind of down for that kind of book where it will grip you. It's not necessarily gonna change your life, but it will definitely keep you entertained. With that rich people behaving badly, elite private school kind of a thing going on. I feel like this is, this is gonna be in your wheelhouse then. But I definitely enjoyed it. And I will check out more by Annie Ward. So I don't know all of the books that she wrote, but she does have a book called Beautiful Bad that my library also has as well. So she's definitely gonna be on my list. I'm marking it right now as a favorite as I'm going through my library app here on my iPad, but <laughs> marking it so I know to check it out. But I had a good time with it. So thriller, interesting. There were some things where I kind of like had a feeling about it. And I do feel like I go through these phases where I am trying to find stuff out in a book or I'm trying to figure out how things come together. And I have that very writer focused, you know, where are the reveals happening? At what point is this happening? Oh, that's a big moment. Where are we in the book? And trying to really look at it from a learning experience. And then there's other times where I get totally lost in it. And then there's times where I'm like committed to trying to figure it out and be smarter than everybody else in the book. And then there's other times where I'm like just lost in the ride and I'm not even thinking about trying to figure stuff out. I'm just like trying to keep up with the book as it like, as it goes on and as things get revealed and I'm just like in it with everybody. So I don't, it's, it's not even like intentional. Like I don't start a certain book and say like this one I'm gonna solve and this one I'm gonna get lost in. But sometimes I just feel like my brain 
is switching and flipping in different ways. And this was one of those books where I was like, ooh, I kind of want to figure this out. Ooh, I kind of want to suspect this. And oh, I'm wondering if it's that. And like some things I was right and some things I just like never saw it coming. And I just enjoyed it. I just enjoyed it. It kept me entertained. It kept me coming back to the page. And I had a fun time with it. So would recommend it for all those reasons. And then the last book I want to talk about, which if you guys have been following me, I feel like I posted about this on Instagram and I definitely have talked about it here already, but I finished my reread of Rachel's Holiday and I wound up listening to the audiobook of this. So I started to read, I read the first chapter in this and I talked about this in another video. And then Sarah from Sarah's Night Sen and I were supposed to read Jennifer Hillier together, but life happened on her end. So when she gets there, we'll get there. But I wound up switching gears. So when I went back to Rachel's Holiday, which I wanted to reread because again, Rachel came out and I bought it and it's 25 years later in real time in book time. I'm not sure if it's 25 years later, but I think that it is. And we pick up Rachel's story again. I had not read this book since forever. This is by Marion Keys. Did I say that already? And I remembered the core of the story. I remember just absolutely loving it. And I forgot how much I forgot. And my God, did I just love this book. Marion Keys. I feel like I had the same feeling when I was reading Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs, which I will talk about next time. So wait for it. Why am I not reading more books by these ladies? Because I'm super fans of both of theirs and I used to read them compulsively and then I just stopped but continued to buy their books and never started reading them again. And Marion Keys is just everything. Read her books, start here if you want to. You can basically start anywhere. This is part of the Walsh family series and there are five sisters in the series. So like each sister gets her own book but it doesn't really matter where you read them, I don't think. So there's a book before this called Watermelon. And then after this, you have Angels. You have Anybody Out There. And then The Mystery of Mercy Close is Helen's book, which I need to read because I never finished that one. But anyway, we're here for Mary. We're here for Mary and Keys. We're here for Mary and Keys, but we're here for Rachel's Holiday. So I started to physically read this, like I said. And then I was like, well, let me where I grab the audiobook so I can listen to it while I'm walking as well. And I'm going to put it down because this is nearly 600 pages, so it's heavy. But I found the 25th anniversary of the audiobook, and Mary and Keys herself reads it, you guys find that one, find that edition of it, listen to it. And just like with the Natalie Goldberg book, if you want to read a book the way it was meant to be read, I have seen Marion Keyes speak back in the heyday when you could go to bookstore signings and readings and everything. And she put such inflection into the voices that is so comedic that I don't think I always would have picked up on on the page, even though her words are completely funny and just her turns of phrases and just everything about how she writes. It was brilliant, just absolutely brilliant. I have no other words for it. I was obsessed. I wish Marion Keys could read every book ever. <laughs> her voice is so perfect. I feel like for an author to be able to also have an audio voice like that and be able to be a, a non-actor, like I think about all the like incredibly amazing audiobook narrators that there are out there, but it was just so well done. I was laughing, I was crying, I was dog-earing. And the one thing that I realized, because early on she like said a couple things, like page 18, I've got a dog ear here. And I couldn't find the line in the book. And what I realized, ding dong, stupid me, is back in the day, and I don't really feel like this happens as much anymore, so this was 1998, was originally published in Great Britain. And they would Americanize the books because obviously we're such dopes, we can't figure out what the different words and phrases and terminology is, I guess. But the 25th anniversary that she narrates is like the original UK version. So I wound up buying, because I have a problem, the 25th anniversary paperback of the book, which will be the UK edition with the UK words in it. But there were, there's like a bar scene in here and there's an entire handful of paragraphs that are missing from this edition. So I don't think the 25th anniversary edition was revamped. And it's not like there's major plot points. Like it's more of just 
like little snippets or again like little phrases or things like that so it definitely makes a difference though and it makes me a little bit sad that again <laughs> like the versions were different but i remember that because way way back in the day her book lucy sullivan is getting married which was her second book which was the first of hers that i ever read and i loved it when i went to london one time i went to waterstones and I wanted to find the UK edition of it because I wanted it. I wanted the UK edition and I've always been the person who obviously needs multiple editions of books that she loves. But anyway, it's just, this book is great. So you're like, uh, you've talked about it for 20 minutes. What's it actually about? So this is about a woman named Rachel Walsh and she wakes up in a hospital room in New York City where she is currently living. And she has, in her words, overdone it the night before taken a few too many pills and she has been rushed to the emergency room and had her stomach pumped and one of her sisters comes to get her to fly her back to Dublin where her family is and they're putting her into the cloisters which is a rehab and Rachel thinks everyone is overreacting she's totally fine she just you know she parties like everybody parties and it's no big deal and everyone's freaking out but she's also familiar with the cloisters and there's been some whispers about celebrities who go there and in her mind, it's just this very posh spa and sauna and just a way to get away. And she's going to hang with celebrities and she's going to have herself a bit of a holiday. So as you can imagine, not quite the case. And Rachel is forced to confront her past and confront what's going on. And we get the present day timeline of the cloisters. And then we get her life in New York and we get to see kind of how, you know, things collide and we get to see rachel coming to terms with things and sort of very similar to 56 days the idea although completely different but the idea that you have one perception of your life or one perception of a situation and whether it's how you rationalize things or how you see things and how that starts to change and how you start to see things in a different way and see things through other people's perspectives and really have you know, a reality check come at you. And it's so beautifully done. And it obviously has some very heavy topics about addiction. And, you know, she talks about the cloisters with, with such humor, but with such sincerity and such seriousness. And much like Jennifer Hillier writes, very complex, very messy, very human characters people who make choices and live with the consequences, people who are not perfect, people who slip and mess up, people who say and do the wrong things. And it is heartbreaking, it is heartwarming. The family is everything. There's an entire thread about her dad being a, an actor in like the local production of Oklahoma and how he's like trying to get his accent right. And it is comedic gold, which is why I say like listening to the audiobook is so good. But Marion Keys herself, is an alcoholic, she's dealt with depression, she's been very honest with it. There's such sort of like real own voices to this, but I just think she, she has found a way in all of her books to write about some really dark, complex subjects and to also bring like just such, like I said, humor and beauty and wit and warmth to it. And I just love it so much. I cannot wait to dive into again, Rachel. It is next on my list after I finish Riley Sager. So stay tuned, you guys. I can't wait to be back in Rachel's world. So that's gonna do it for this part of what I read in April. And just a little sneak preview coming up. We've got Riley Sager coming up. We've got Lisa Jewell. I read The Reunion by Guillermo Musso. Uh, what else did I read? I'm reading Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead, which I expect to have done by the end of the month. And I'm gonna start again, Rachel. So part two of this will be filled with all of that and maybe more, I feel like I'm forgetting something. But until then, thank you guys so much for hanging out today and spending part of your time with me here at the channel. And if you are new here, welcome, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff if you feel so inclined. And I will see you guys in another video when that comes out. So until then, bye everybody.